Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Three Point Weekly, our yearly edition of our NBA All Star Ballots. There's going to be some interesting debates in today's episode. We're going to have some tough decisions to make over, as it is every year, another tough decision of All Star nominees. We're going to have some returning All Stars, some first time All Stars, and some fun discussions to have as we get to the bottom of the board. Just to make things clear, uh, I think I can speak for the most of us here that we are not basing our starting picks on fan voting. This is not a fan voting influence. This is a three-man dictatorship here for the selection of our starters. The fans do not get input here. Uh, that being said, from there, we will continue on with our bench uh, as would be normal, and we will go through the 12-man rosters. I think we're going to start in the Western Conference because I think the Eastern Conference discussions are going to be pretty interesting this year towards the bottom end. So we'll start with you, Tyreek. Who do you have as your starting guards in the Western Conference? First off, I just want to say it's basically been a year since we started the podcast. Because I was going to our, say the same. Yeah. Our first episode was All-Star Picks, and now we're back full circle moment, man. So shout out to us for still going strong a year later, man. But... Um, my starting guards, uh, first guard is Luka Doncic. I think that goes without saying. He's been one of the best players in the league, not just out of guards, just in the entire world this season. Putting up absurd numbers and has kept the Mavericks afloat, you know, when they lost guys in the offseason like Jalen Brunson. And, you know, he's had some historical games this year, so he's my first guard. And then my second guard, we kind of had this conversation last week. It was probably between two guys. I went with SGA. Um, I think he's earned it, man. Okay, so he's been playing some damn good basketball. And he's, has, he's been the catalyst. You know, he's basically in 30 every single night. And he's been hooping, um, showing people like – we already knew he had that all-star potential, but I think he might have even exceeded some people's expectations this year. And he's been balling out. He's my second guard. Okay, okay. I, li I like the picks, man. I like the picks. I'll say for one, I got one in common with you, which is Luca, and I think that's pretty obvious that everybody would probably have him. I mean, just speaking off numbers, he arguably has the best in the whole world. And like you said as well, just keeping the Mavericks afloat almost by himself. I mean, you don't see stuff like that often. Some signature performances like his 60-point triple-double earlier in the season. There's just been so much this year that it just seems like he's having a special season and spot is fully deserved. My pick, I decided to go with the other guy. I went with John Morant in the starting spot. I just think trying to make predictions on like accuracy and seeing who would really make this game, thinking of an all-star game and what I want to see, yeah, it's like – when two guys are equally deserving, who do I want to see get that starting spot? And I love Shea, great game, super entertaining. But there's nobody that really is as exciting for me as watching John Morant play basketball. And when it's so close like that, All-Star Games exhibition is for fun. I don't think Shea is a bad pick at all. But just what Jaws done with this Grizzlies team being a perennial top seed, just playing great almost all the time, no matter who's in, who's out, no matter what happens – just so much great stuff from him that I gave him my starting spot. That's fair. Ja's ja been incredible, and so has the Grizzlies. And, you know, he he's their MVP type candidate. So, no, not a bad pick at all, man. You know Ja's going to put on the show in the All-Star game. Hell, regular season game. Ja's that guy, man. Yeah, 100%. Well, you guys said everything there is to say about Luka. He's, he's clearly the one lock in the, in the Western Conference backcourt as far as their starting guards go. Uh, I also went with Jaw as my second option. And about the only discernible thing for me was just the fact that the Grizzlies are up at the top of the conference in the two seed. And even though the Thunder are playing better than people expected, they're still an 11 seed. Now, SGA is obviously a big part in them doing that. But uh, the fact that the Grizzlies have been as successful as they have been and the fact that Jaw is the engine of the offense that allows them to be so successful uh, gave him the slight edge for me over SGA. But... Like you said, Tyreek, SGA has had a great year, and I can't be mad at anyone who has SGA in in that starting spot. He's been fully deserving and is definitely going to be a first-time All-Star this year. Yeah, when it's as close as, as it is, you kind of got to nitpick at some small things. And, like, yeah, even though we said, you know, OKC's exceeded expectations, Memphis is still, like, top two in the Western Conference. Like, they may have even exceeded some people's, my expectations. Like, still really good. So, definitely fair, man. Definitely fair. But I think, like, those are the three guards that we all had like in consideration that that, that should be in consideration to start. Cause obviously like other guys have missed time. I'm um, like Curry Booker and guys like that. So, you know, it's a three man race. We'll see which two do get in real life, but. 
Yeah, definitely. It's definitely a three-man race. There's some other quality guards in the West that are very deserving of some spots, as we'll talk about later. But we'll move on to the starting forwards in the West for the time being. There's a bit of some household names here, but we might have some discussion about some hometown product of Utah coming through here. But we'll start with you here, Gabe. Who are your three starting forwards in the Western Conference for this year's All-Star Game in Utah? Well, I guess I'll uh, save the drama for the end. I got Jokic, you know, I feel like most conversations have him as the favorite for the MVP right now. Favorite for the MVP, best of your position in the league, and definitely your conference, not even a conversation on that end. I think Jokic has that lockdown pretty easily. I don't even feel like I have to really explain much. Then I got LeBron. I think LeBron's going to be the captain. He's going to be a starter. Even if we didn't want him to be, I think it's just – since he's turned 38, he's turned it up so much. The Lakers, while not 500 – have been a lot better since the beginning of 2023. So I think that mixed with AD has been out during that stretch. So them heating up in it, basically being fueled by LeBron and him turning it up. I think that's going to do a lot because earlier in this season, I don't know if he was a lock as a starter. And at this point in the season, I think he definitely is. And then my last pick, like I said, saving the drama for the end, I do have Sabonis. I know there was a lot of talk about Lori, but just from my perspective, seeing the way the Kings have played this season and for the biggest move to really send them in that direction, being the Sabonis trade, the way he's played really helped that offense flourish, especially. I think that's just so impactful and for a franchise that really needed it and just how special this season has been for them. I think the hometown all-star starter would be great, but Sabonis's case is just so strong for me that I think he deserves it. I like it. I thought she was going in the marketing direction, but I like it, man. Um, yeah, I, I also have Jokic, of course. That goes without saying. Probably the MVP right now. Um, uh, Denver, top of the Western Conference, even with the rest of his point cast outside of Aaron Gordon being a little spotty, but, you know, he's still been doing Jokic-like things. And then LeBron, yes, ever since he's turned 38, he's just stepped it up another level. Um, even though the Lakers aren't great, they've been winning games, made a big trade earlier today. So, you know, we'll see if maybe they can make that play and push, you know, for real. And I do have Laurie Markin in. I went, I went the Lowry route. I was close to having some bonus. It was, it was very close. But man, Markin has been special this year, man. Like he's just – he's been put on the show. He's been probably the most improved player in basketball. Really been hoping, been, you know, making Utah somewhat relevant, you know, even though they fell off a little bit. They're still staying afloat because of Lowry. You know, he's just been that good, that special this season. So I went with him, and it's in Utah, hometown guy. They should get a, they should get a starter, especially with just how injuries are affecting the Western Conference. To me, he's the next best front court player that has a case to make it. Now Sabonis, he definitely does too. But I, I'm gonna give the edge to Lowry, especially you know the hometown discount. You know, I think he gets it for me. Yeah, that that's the way I went too. Uh, and the All Star game being in Utah definitely played a factor because. The fact that we were expecting Utah to just be bad this year and there was no real thought in anyone's mind that there was going to be an all-star coming out of Utah playing in Utah this year. And Laurie has bucked that pretty heavily. And there was thoughts after his hot start to the season, okay, maybe he'll regress a little bit. And he's just gotten even better since then. Uh, like you alluded to, Gabe, uh, Simonis has had a great year as well. I think he definitely has an argument for this spot. But as far as how good Lori has been this season, uh, that just can't be ignored for me. He's been so productive on this team. His improvement has been absolutely absurd from what it was last year in Cleveland and a couple of years ago in Chicago. And for me, he had to get that spot for how much of an offensive engine he's been for Utah for what is surprisingly one of the best offensive teams in the league. Yeah. Yeah, I think good picks all around. I mean – those are the four guys. I think it's just like talking about how the starters in the backcourt was going to be between three guys and two of them are going to get the spot. I think this is the same situation where it's just four guys and three will get the spot. Lori, just not a bad, not a bad shout at all. Just thinking, like I said with Luca earlier, having some signature performances, I think that Lori's had plenty of those himself that really gives him that extra case. And it's like, these are the moments you look to when you think of why is this guy an all-star beyond just looking at the stats. Yeah, I'll say this. I think that year in Cleveland really helped him out because, you know, the issue with him in Chicago was like, well, he has a smaller defender on, on him. He doesn't know how to take advantage. 
I feel like, you know, um, J.D. Bickerstaff gave him the confidence. Like, you got a small guy on you, take him in the post, because that's just the kind of brand of basketball they played last year. And then, obviously, I think in, like, Eurobasket, he was hooping. And then that was just a glimpse of what we're getting this season. Like, he's bringing the ball to the court. He's, you know, playmaking a little bit, taking small guys on the post. If you put a big on him, you know, he's going to take him outside and sauce him up out there. Like, really, like, not just statistic-wise, but just basketball ability-wise, one of the most improved players in the league just overall. And like you said before the season, like maybe the joke all-star would have been like Colin Sexton because people were like, oh, he's getting traded to Utah. They're going to be bad. He'll probably put up like 40 shots a game. And, you know, he might get it just off of counting numbers. But it's been Lowry, and I don't think anybody saw that coming. So shout out to him. Um, I think him and Sabonis, though, like you said, Gabe, it's a four-guy race. They're both going to get in. So at least the Kings will have one all-star, I think, for sure. Yeah, definitely. I think if anyone doesn't have Sabonis on their list, then there definitely needs to be some questions asked, especially considering some of the injuries around some of the forwards in the Western Conference. We'll move now to the guards in the Western Conference. We've already alluded to who that third guy is going to be for one of us, uh, for most of us with either Ja or SGA, whoever was not starting. That fourth one will be up to a little bit more discussion. So, Given that Gabe thinks or has thought for so long that Gabe is better, uh, Steph is better than Luca, we'll start with Gabe and see if he has Steph and as one of the two guards, as the primary guards in the bench for the Western well, well card spots. The Steph Curry stand gave himself. <laughs> you know, Steph has missed some games this year. You know, and. I think that Steph Curry is held to a very high standard. And sometimes Steph Curry's average games can be some people's career years. Now let me let me let, let me stop the cat, bro. Uh no, Steph Curry, he just he's had a good season, but you know, he's just missed some time. And I think his stats aren't up there with the top two in top three starting guys, really. So he is my second reserve guard next to Shea. I think that. Just looking at the whole pool of guys, Steph is still the fourth best guy there. I think he has the fourth best case there. I think there may be some slight arguments for some other guys, but just looking at it on the macro scale, I just think when it comes to the impact on your team and just everything that he still does and continues to showcase, plus it's the all-star game, and I just don't see a world where Steph Curry's not in it. Yeah, Steph's my second guard off the bench, too. It's just he, he has missed some time. I'm being a little more lenient with missed games this year, like because I feel like there's just been so many guys. Now, if you miss if you've missed like 50 percent of the season, that's where we're kind of like I'm a little iffy there. But Steph, he's played in a decent amount of games, and when he's been out there, he's been amazing. Um, so I'm not gonna you know hold that back from him. I'm sure he's gonna you know play a lot more as you know we get towards All Star break. So I'm not gonna hold too that too much against him because he's been so good when he's been on the floor. Um. Now, if he would have played more games, would he even be still in that starter conversation? Maybe. We'll see. But, you know, second guard off the bench, I think that's fine. Um, it's like, like Gabe said, it's just hard for me to find any way to leave Steph Curry off of my all-star ballot. Yeah, I agree. I mean, Steph is just one of those guys who he might not the high, be the high-flying dunker, but we all know he's produced a ton of highlights over his career and just – He's got to be one of those guys that shows up at an all-star game for as good as he's been this year. SGA was my first guard off the bench, and Curry's my second. But Curry's definitely deserving, and as we've talked about earlier, SGA is certainly deserving of his spot as well. As He's put up an absolute career year and has an argument for MIP in his own right, even though we've kind of collectively agreed as a pod that SGA probably isn't the type of guy that should win that award, but that's a whole other discussion. We'll move on to the forwards in the Western Conference, a position that is going to be interesting this year because we've had the likes of Jaron Jackson Jr., a potential defensive player of the year candidate who missed a lot of time early. We've also had AD and Zion pick up pretty significant injuries. So there's some key guys here that you would have thought would be pretty much shoe wins for the All-Star game that could be in some interesting debates heading into All-Star weekend. We'll start with you, Tyreek. Who are your three bench forwards in the Western Conference? I don't feel great about him. I'm going to be honest. I don't. Um, so bonus is my first guy. I think he makes it. Then that's when we get into tricky territory. Very tricky territory. Um, I went, I, I did have Zion. 
I know he's missed a lot of time. He's played on, I think, 29 or 30 games. He's, he's missed a good amount of the season. He's missed some good some good time, but when he was on the floor, he was so good. The Pelicans were, I think, the one seed at the time. I can't I can't deny that, man, especially with the forward pool being so I don't want to say ass, but it's bad. It's not good in the Western Conference. Like they they've seen better years with better forward pools. And injuries has not helped that at all. I went with Zion as as my second guy. And then my third one, this is the spot where I had three different names. I had Anthony Davis. I know we joked last week about Aaron Gordon. I had him in consideration. I really did. I'm giving it to Jaron, though. I'm giving it to Jaron. I think he's played above 30 games. Memphis has been so good, especially since he came back from his injury. He's averaging almost three and a half blocks a game. Like, that is absurd production defensively. And offensively, he's giving you 16 a night. He's grabbing six boards. He's playing solid on the offensive side of the floor. Had to give it to Jaron, man. I think I think Memphis gets two all-stars in my book. They, they should get two because they've been so good. And Jaron defensively, probably the defensive player of the year. You know, as long as he continues to stay on the court, he should win that award in my book right now. But it's tough. It's The West, is like, once we get to this part, it's just like, you kind of got to be a little nitpicky. AD was he was incredible when he's on the floor, but he's played twenty five games out of out of I think forty seven possible ones. So he's missed a significant amount of time. I had to knock him down for that. See, personally, I have the exact same names as you, but I don't think it was that difficult. You know, obviously there's the one flip because Sabonis, Laurie, but uh, Memphis has the best defensive rating in the NBA. Their defense was not that good before Jaron came back. He single-handedly come in and flipped that team around on that end of the floor and made them not just better, but the best in the league. And I think regardless of what his offensive numbers may be, regardless of like games missed, that like impact is just so crucial. And in a year where a lot of guys have missed games, I think that matters even less in his situation. But like you think of something like, like Rudy Gobert racked up all-star selections for years based on his defensive ability and him carrying the Jazz to like a top defense by himself, basically. And Jaron is doing that, but almost on a whole different level right now. And so just with that, I think he's a shoe in. And then, like you said, with Zion, like the Pelicans were one of the premier teams in the league while he was playing. And it's not like they've fallen off crazy, not at like a Suns level fall off since he's been out. But still, they were a different level of team with him on the floor. And like you said, a pool that's kind of thin, there's not really a whole lot of guys past these six or so, maybe like seven or eight guys. But on just the macro level, like I think those backup three in whatever order you have them are the backups. Yeah, it's like when I was going through, like trying to make my list, once you got past these guys, it was like Jeremy Grant, who's put up, Great counting numbers, great shooting splits, but Portland's not that good. So it's like, you know, is is he gonna be an all-star? Not probably not. And I don't think they deserve, you know, multiple if you know Dame were were to make it, right? And then after that, like it's like Mikhail Bridges, just just names that you just can't have on there, man. And Kawhi's missed so much time, Paul George has missed so much time. That's even worse than what Anthony Davis has missed. So it's just like it's weird. Like, it's, I don't know. Jaron definitely deserves it. It's just weird to like picture him. I think, like, because even though, like, how you like compared it to what Rudy used to do, like you said, like, Memphis doesn't get that, I think, respect. Like, they do have the best defensive rating, but it's like, how often does that get talked about? And then when it's with Jaron, it's like, well, he's always in foul trouble or he's missing time and stuff like that. But he's leading the league in blocks. You know, three and a half a game is like outstanding. And he, like, he flipped the switch for them defensively when he came back. So, yeah, he, he deserves it. Um, Aaron Gordon got slight consideration. I'm, I'm interested to see if Dev has anything different from what we have. I do. <laughs> I, I do. I was I was a bit more harsh on lack of games played. Uh, the That's obvious fair. one is Sabonis. He is in on the list. Uh, there was no question for me as to whether he was going to get in here or not. The only question was whether he was going to start. Uh, after that, it's tough because, like you guys said, like Jaron's been great, but missed time to start. Zion's been great, but has missed time. AD's been great, but has missed a lot of time. Uh, so it was it was really tough. Uh, I ended up going with Aaron Gordon as one of my picks. 
partly because they've been so good. Uh, they're the number one seed in the West, second best team in the league. And Aaron Gordon has arguably been their second best player this year. He has been outrageously efficient. He continues to be really good for them defensively and be a very important reason as to why they're at least middle of the pack defensively across the league. Uh, so I did end up giving him the nod. After that, you can just flip a coin for which guy that missed time that I'm giving the spot to. Uh, but given how impactful Jaron has been, uh, I'm giving Jaron that third forward spot because like you alluded to, Gabe, he just completely transformed Memphis's defense once he came back. And he probably should be the guy who's going to win defensive player of the year if he is going to stay healthy. So as much as Zion's been good, as much as AD's been good, Jaron is probably going to continue to play more games than those guys will before the All-Star break happens. And so because of that, I got to give him a bit of the edge. Good shout, honestly. Good good <laughs> shout on Gordon. I don't think he would have made it for me just because when I think of Denver's season, it just feels so like Jokic show, which is weird because for a team that was like missing their second and third best players last year, now obviously you're making the argument that now Gordon is that, so now like their third and best players still – Having those two guys back, it still feels like the team is so Jokic-centric. But at the same time, being one of the best teams in the NBA right now, playing the way they are, I can see, especially with the argument you gave, why that would be a team deserving of having two All-Stars. So while not a pick I probably would have made, I totally understand the argument, and I do think it's incredibly valid. Yeah, yeah. like on, on any other year, Aaron Gordon was probably not in this discussion. But he's having arguably the best year of his career. Whilst the Denver are the number one seed, whilst there's a lot of forwards who are really injured, I, I'll also note here that if Anthony Edwards was considered a forward and not a guard, I probably would have had him here. But unfortunately, for his case, he is a guard, so he didn't get in on on the spot. Yeah, same. He should be probably just a forward, honestly. But we're going we're going to look back at this in about a month. And Dez probably going to have that pick right, just like how he had with Chris Middleton <laughs> last year. Yeah, you're probably, you're probably exactly right. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> like he said, if there is a year that Aaron Gordon will make an all-star game, it will be this season. This would be the year. Because I feel like coaches more than us are even like, oh, you missed these many games? Like, nah, you ain't getting it, man. Anthony Davis, you're not getting in. Zion, you're not getting in. The Wiggins of the year. <sighs> The weekends of this season, man. So, well, we got two more spots, though. We got correct? two spots. Yeah, I'm not well, confident on these. I'm not confident on these. So one I of them want... I am. The one of them I am. The other one is just like, ah, uh, I don't know. I uh, I want to give mine Do we first, all... just because I don't want to say some stupid names, okay. and then you like okay. the, after you guys give like the good picks. Okay. 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 So, and I'm already like, ah, my first one is Dame. Okay. I think, you know, I'm thinking all-star game. I'm like, Dame, yeah. He's had a couple pretty solid performances this year, like a couple standout things, especially recently. You know, Blazers started off the season pretty good, but now we're in a bit of a slump. So, like, recency bias does not really help that much and it's like it's not a great argument but just like looking at his stats versus some of the rest of the field and just who dame is the things he can do the level of player he is i feel like he will make his way into the game like i said not feeling great about it and there's definitely a lot of holes in his case but i think there's a lot of holes in everyone's case and honestly the second guy i have is a wild card I would probably be more confident in than Damian Lillard because here's where I put De'Aaron Fox. And with Fox, I like this pick for myself personally because I had him on my top 10 point guards list before the season, guys. What can I say? What can I say? (laughs) I think he proved me right. I think alongside Sabonis, he's transformed this Kings team. And it's it's just like the beam all day, man. Fans of the Kings on the podcast. He's had a career-level year, really submitted himself as what I think can be a franchise point guard for a pretty solid team. I don't know if they're going to be a perennial three seed, but do I think this team can be at least a perennial like out of the play-in going forward with this formula? 
yeah, it seems pretty successful. And these are players that I don't think are one-year wonders because we've seen multiple good years out of Sabonis. And I think we saw a lot of good stuff out of Fox last year after the trade. So I don't think this is more lightning in a bottle. I really think this is who De'Aaron Fox is, and I think this is his time to make the game. And I I literally wrote below this, R.I.P. Booker, because Devin Booker was electric. Like, I think I think he would have been a shoe-in as a starter next to Luka, but then he got hurt because he was absolutely carrying that Suns team on his back. And as much as I wanted to get him in, it was just too many games missed at this point to give him that spot. R.I.P. Book for real. The amount of stuff that you just talked about not being confident in your picks, I had the exact same two guys. Really? Okay. <laughs> yep. Had him in that order too, but I think De'Aaron over Dame because Dame's missed more uh, time. That's why I said Dame's I was more worse. confident in him. I just yeah. had them written down in the order I did. I mean, it, yeah, it seemed like Dame went through a little bit of a slump himself, but then you look at the numbers, it's like 29 a game, like top near the top of the league. Dame's still that guy, man. He's still that guy. Um, I, now, the Blazers' success as a team might hinder him, but I couldn't leave him off, man. Leaving somebody off his average in 29 points is kind of crazy. I couldn't do that. Well, I, I apparently can. So. I, 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 know, I know you can, Dave. I, I, think I, might have let, I, I think I left somebody off averaging maybe more than that, so we'll see. I don't know. Maybe a little less. Maybe, uh, but, yeah, yeah. the air is like the Kings, the Kings got two All-Stars, bro. They got two yeah. all-stars. Nothing 100%. more needs to be said. Like the beam all day. 100%. I'm very glad that I pushed my deer and fox as an all-star propaganda over the summer. And he has been absolutely brilliant as of the Kings. And given that the three seed right now, there's no way I couldn't have Fox in there. I did go with Booker over Dame. They've mm-hmm. both missed they've both missed time. Obviously, Book's missed a bit more and he's going to continue to miss a bit more, but like you guys said, Booker was just such an absurd carry job for the Suns to the point that they were hovering around the one seed to going down out of the plan and now back up to the seven seed over the last few games. But Booker is just so instrumental to this team's success at this point that even with the missed time, the fact that he was so instrumental and the fact that Portland are now the 13 seed it was tough to put Dame in here for me over Booker. Definitely a fair argument for him. If Portland start to rise up the standings a bit more by the time the reserves are announced, that's going to help his case a bit. But sitting in the 13th seed and only winning two of your last 10 games, it makes it a bit tough for Dame to get in there. But like he said, Tyreek, he's had a great year. He's still proving that he's as good as he's ever been and is definitely deserving of an all-star spot. And even if he doesn't get in any I wouldn't be surprised if somebody gets picked, needs an injury replacement, and one of Lillard or Booker, if he's back, ends up in anyways. I'm glad I'm glad somebody had Book, man, because like y'all just said, the way he was carrying that Suns team was not something that I expected to see because he took his game to a whole new level. Like, he was already first team all NBA last season. He was ascending again, like taking his game to a new level. It's just the Gorn injury had to take him out. But, you know, hopefully he can get back soon. Um not sure what his timetable is, but if I feel like personally I haven't watched Devin Booker play in quite some time. Like it's been a maybe Christmas, I think, is the last time he tried to play. It's, it's been a while. It is really weird because if there was like an injury guy, I feel like Booker would be the guy, but Booker's also yeah. been injured. So it's a real strange situation because like looking at the other members around that like kind of area. I don't think like the Blazers with Grant would be deserving of a second All Star. Would it be Anthony Edwards? I don't think Anthony Davis would be like in there because the Lakers aren't deserving. I guess, or maybe it would not like Reek. Neither of us had Gordon, so maybe that's where he gets a shout. Because if any team's gonna have two All Stars, it's pretty much Anthony Edwards or some team is getting two, unless yeah. you put Booker in there, right? Or Zion's back and he gets in. True. Well, I, I had Zion on the list, so I did too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, you know who disappointed me? Like I just thought his numbers would be better. CJ, I thought yeah. his numbers would be so much better. He started really slow. He's been he's had a few decent games as of late with so many guys being out, but he started the season in a pretty good pretty good slump. I mean, he shoot like forty two percent from the field. I know CJ's never been like. 
been crazy efficient, but he's always been good for like 45% ish around there. But yeah. 42 is kind of rough. Yeah. Yeah. I thought yeah. his playmaking would be higher than it is. I mean, scoring, I mean, start off a season at shooting slump, you know, that's one thing. But for that team, like, there's just so much talent. And I know, like, especially like a BI type player, it's not like he needs, like, fed the bike and, you know, create his own shots and stuff like that. But. I don't know. I feel like I, I expected a little bit more than slightly below six assists as a guy being the lead guard on a team with so much talent. If there was a year for him to make it, it was this season. He might never yeah. touch an all-star game. Yeah. Yeah, that's facts. 